Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Modesty33 here, AKA Crystal with a C. Back at you with another video, but if you're new to my channel, you just happen to click on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I try to put out one or two videos a week. I do sit downs, reviews, reactions, vlogs. So if any of that interests you, make sure you check out the prior videos on my channel. And if you see anything you like before you leave, make sure you subscribe. So today, you guys, I'm actually going to be trying to do two reactions. I'm going to do for Cloak and Dagger, as promised, season two, episode three and four. I know five is out as well, but I can only fit two reactions on my phone at a time. So I'll have to edit three and four and then put out probably five and six by that time um, at a later date. But I'll try to get these out to you guys by the end of the week. We'll see. We'll see. So anyway, um, I did put out the video, which surprisingly to me got like a lot of views for one of my videos anyway it got a lot of views um as far as what happened to episode one and two if you're on the channel and you're just checking out this video you're checking out reactions for cloak and dagger um please check out that video um it was essentially like what happened to my cloak and dagger reactions and essentially to sum it up um, I lost episode one and two after recording them because just because the footage was not good, I had to end up deleting what I did have. So I do a review of episode one and two on that video. So if you're interested in that, please check that out. But this is um, my reaction for episode three. And also I'm going to try to do episode four and then I'm going to try to get to the gym and then the Bible study tonight. So I'm being very ambitious today, you guys. So I um, hope you all have been doing well, by the way, like it's been a while since I've done a reaction. So um, hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. So I'm not going to get into a recap because I did recap in that video. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and get into this episode three. We kind of left off on a little bit of a cliffhanger with O'Reilly versus O'Reilly. So the cat's out of the bag with that one. So I look forward to seeing where they go from here, as well as the whole thing with the girls being trafficked and the ambulance private ambulance company, all that drama. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So without further ado, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get into my reaction for Cloak and Dagger season two, episode three. Don't know what the episode is called, but it will be in the title of this video. So I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you on the other side with my review and observations. Bye guys. find those missing girls. What do you say, Tandy? You want to keep on? It was you who killed all those people in the club, mm -hmm. wasn't it? What the? Last chance, Tandy. Okay. Just stay out of my way. When I went into the water after I was shot, I divided into two? Yep. So you and your twin have the same DNA, the same fingerprints, even the same memories up until the point of the split. But very distinct personalities. Yeah, you said it. So we conducted brain scans on the pairs. In the dociles, there's almost no activity in the anger and rage center of the cerebral cortex. But in the aggressives, there's only activity in the rage center. Don't worry. I'll take you somewhere safe and Tandy and I will go after her. Uh, no, no. No, Bridge is the only one that can help us. I can't even shoot straight anymore. I'm useless. You heard me, Nina. You're the same person. Same memories. If anybody knows where the other Bridget is going, it's you. And in another lifetime, I was a friend. At least he was to me. I don't know if he'd say the same. 
You're a cop. Can't you find these condoms on your own? I'm not really with the police right now. And why is that? Well, fit the whole protect and serve racket anymore. Looks like I'm not the only one making career changes. The driver, he said... He said something before... She... What did he say? There was going to be another job tonight, but he didn't know where. So where do you think she'd go next? I don't know. Yes, you do. That's why we're here. So, come on, tell us where you think that she went, because... Okay, if I'm going to do this, you need to give me a okay, minute, okay? Stop okay. doing it. Yeah, we'll wait in the hall. You think I'm like her? Back on the wall, stolen weapons? No. No, that's ridiculous. I mean, those people in the club, they were all there because of me. They're dead because of her. She's a force of destruction, and you're a protector. How do you know? Because you protect me. To find the girl she started with the drugs. When you're dealing with any volume of girls, drugs are the way to ensure all of them are pliant. Mm. That's what led her to the gangland meeting. And here's where we found the ambulances. The next place you go is Pier 81. Vice knows it's a hotspot for drug traffic. You mean this Pier 81? Oh, phew. Okay, you're certainly in her head. So where does the next card take us? This deck here is all about the more acceptable New Orleans sex trade. It was up for a trip to Bourbon Street. What, just walk into a strip joint? Yeah, that's generally how you enter places, by walking in. <laughs> okay, this is the door. <laughs> oh, everyone giving up for Tandy, just stepping up to center stage. You can't just keep tearing up the city and hurting people. Hurting people work sometimes, Tandy. Those girls we're looking for are at the Bayou Brothers truck stuff in Slidell. Isn't that right? We can get to them if we leave right now. Look, Tandy messed with me. Are you with me, or are you going to slow me down? Tandy messed with me. Bridget, look. Don't do this. Hold her right there. Seriously. You have the right to remain silent. Oh, why? You're gonna shoot me? Bang! I'm making both of us look bad. If you're gonna shoot me, shoot me. That's what I thought. What? Where is he? Oh, you most certainly do know something. You, his partner tonight, Billy Johnson, was murdered. Covering from his kind of your thing. No, I mean about the Johnson kid. He didn't mean to hurt him. Connors convinced me to back his story. Said his uncle would take care of me. Said I could bank a favor. But a year later, when I'm getting kicked off the force on a drunk up drug charge, he's nowhere to be found. Oh, did Rusty break up with you? Look, I tried to find Connors. I did. I, I got nothing. You watched an innocent kid get shot. And then you banged a favor. You didn't get to play the victim. <gasps> well, now I suppose you can. What if I just want to hurt people? Start with the ones who deserve it, I guess. She got started on the missing girl. Looking for Connors. But ended up seeing the post. Okay. She saved them. Do they look safe to you? They're petrified. But she didn't even call the police. All right, she's not right about this. And what if she is? There's nothing. It's all. I, I, I touched you, but there's nothing. That's horrible. And I can't wait. She up. has no hope. She probably got plenty of fear. Where can you try? That's depressing, bro. Y'all got this depressing behind music. This nightmare. I know where they were going. What if we wait? 
You know who is on her way. She can take care of the gang members. We get the girls and bring them to Bridget. We are not waiting for her. Why not? Because her style of shoot first, ask questions later is what got my brother killed. I have an idea. You're going to need to move back a little. What are you going to do? You have new tracks. So do I. I'll bring him on back. Okay. Oh, no. I'm oh, what the hell was that shit? How the hell you oh. that shit? Yeah, that was a very interesting episode of Cloak and Dagger, season two, episode three. So in this episode, you still have them kind of going along and trying to find these missing girls. Um, And then you have Mina Hess, who essentially is like the code breaker as far as what happened to Bridget. And then we get these... um, Throughout the episode, we get these flashbacks of, you know, 246 days ago, 230, 113, 119, and so on. So you kind of catch up on what's been going on, not just with Bridget, but kind of like some of the other characters. You see Tyrone's mom in there as well. And so that was really cool because I was so confused. I'm like, how did Bridget just go back to work after she got shot by Connors? Like, that was really confusing to me. So this was a really good episode to kind of fill in those missing pieces as far as Bridget actually, from the time of getting shot, um, was split into two different people. And, you know, Bridget, like the one, Mayhem, I guess, you know, go ahead and call her, Mayhem tried to kill Bridget in the hospital, but then became very focused on trying to find Connors and kill Connors. So then when that wasn't working out, when she wasn't able to find Connors, then she stumbled upon this whole thing with these missing girls. So that's kind of been the mission since then and like essentially killing everybody who she finds in her path that has something to do with these girls being, you know, missing and being trafficked essentially is what we find out has been happening. And so um, you have that go on throughout the episode. You see the priest that Tyrone used to always confide in, and he's like an alcoholic. He's on the streets, which is really sad to see. Like, and then you see that Mayhem has been going and seeing him on the streets, been giving him alcohol, been talking to him, and um, you know he's very much in a very hopeless space. So that's really sad to see as well. Um, and then what was even like worse was like when Mayhem saved these girls um, who had been trafficked. You know, I don't really know how far they had gotten into the process with them because it looked like the first set of girls that were trafficked or that they found um, and that Mayhem had left. It looks like they were on the way to take them to the same like little place or the little house that. Um, well, actually, hmm, I don't know. I don't really know because now I'm thinking about it because the girl 
the one girl that Tyrone touched, she saw that place that the other girls were at. So maybe that was just like their headquarters. And I don't know where they were moving these particular girls to, maybe to a client or to another house. I don't know. But, um, like, it was really sad when Tandy touched her. She was like, there's nothing there. There's no hole. I don't like that. That is utterly depressing. Like, utterly depressing. So, that was really sad. But, um, you know, and Tyrone was able to find the place where the other girls were being kept through touching that girl as well. They were able to get there before Mayhem showed up. But then Mayhem showed up and, like, she essentially, like, was trying to clean house. And she just fired the little, um gun and like killed everybody and you saw that there was like these are some pretty young kids so they're not like the thing is um to stop operations like that you know as far as girls who are being trafficked these are they're like some really high level people who are behind the scenes orchestrating a lot of this stuff you look at these little kids who who sitting up here in this little shed essentially and they monitoring these girls they run here playing cards and watching tv they, they ain't no masterminds. They, they're they being paid to do a job. They're being paid to watch these girls or what have you. And really, you are out here shooting them, but you need to be questioning them to find out who is paying them. Like, where who's the person above them who is um, essentially making money off of this? So, um, yeah, her, like, what Tyrone said was absolutely correct. Like, you know, because Tandy is still dealing with inward frustration and anger herself, and she's really angered about the things that she's seeing. She sees that mayhem is getting results, so she's like, well, just let her, you know, finish him off and kill him. But like Tyrone said, like, her methods are essentially what got his brother killed and what led to this cover-up of his brother. So he sees, like, okay, yeah, she might be getting immediate results, but how many people is she hurting and killing in the process? And, you know, like, really, it's not the way to, to go about doing it. So, um, yeah, so, like, yeah, in the end, and we see that Tyrone, you know, with him, like, going back and forth, it's starting to have, like, a drain or effect on him. He looked a bit disoriented. Um, we see Tandy get to use out some of her new abilities. Um, and so it'll be interesting. It looked like, yeah, Tyrone absorbed her into, like, I think the dark dimension, I think that's where, I think that's what I read when I watched the finale, that that's what happened to Connors, is he was absorbed him and sent him to like a dark dimension or something. I don't know. So I wonder if she'll be able to come back from that. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, and I don't know what the whole thing of them splitting, because you have this docile part and then you have this very angry and aggressive part. But like Bridget says, she doesn't feel, she's she's not felt whole or complete since being shot and she just thought it was PTSD. So I wonder really for Bridget to be like whole again, like if they need to do something for them to combine. Um, so because you just see that Bridget just seems very broken. She just seems very fearful. And Bridget used to have like a little bit of an edge to her. So she wasn't out here killing folk, but she had like an edge. And I think that's what, like the the mayhem, like the counter, the um her counterpart has. So I think she needs some of that to continue to be a an effective detective. But she don't need to be right here killing people, you know. So you know, it's just one of those things. I wonder if we're gonna need to bring her back from the dark dimension in order for Bridget to actually be complete. So we'll see about that. But yeah, that was a really good episode. I really like the flashbacks. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So, you know, catching up with Bridget and kind of seeing what her journey has been for like the past almost year now. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can fit in episode four before I go to Zumba. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that reaction. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure you do share it with anyone else who's watching Cloak and Dagger season two. Also, comment below. Let me know what you thought about this episode. And before you leave, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Again, you do that by hitting that red button below and hitting the bell next to it so you're notified when I do upload future reactions. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I really appreciate it and I will see you in the very next video. Bye guys.